Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you a concept that is very important in abstract art. And the concept is going to make help make your paintings really successful and keep your viewer really interested. And there's one word that describes this, and it's called variety. Um, I can't wait to demonstrate and to share with you what I've done today. But first, if you like tips and um, techniques on abstract art and you'd like to learn more, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and the bell to be notified with for all my upcoming YouTube videos. And click the like button as well. So let's get started. I've created a really fun, easy, um, exercise that I'm going to describe to you and then show you how to do it, which is based on having variety in your work. And this is one piece that I've done on watercolor paper. And I just started with a pattern. Then I went into um, doing shapes and variety of shapes and variety of color um, is so important to keep your, your, your viewer interested. So this is what I did, and I I just focused with I like uh, like limited palettes, so I just did yellows and reds in this one, um, and value is about lightness and darkness of a color, and with shape getting variety, you want large and small and medium shapes. So basically, you can cover everything if you just think in threes, and to help you with that, I always put three different size brushes out to work with. But this is what I did first, and then I cut out a little piece of one of the paintings of this that I loved, and I love it enough that I'm going to frame it and have it as a finished piece. Now, look at this. You may come out with a finished piece, or it could be just an exercise. But a lot of times, you can come out with something that you really love. This is just an acrylic frame. Let's see, this is a five by seven, but you can put them um, and in a frame and keep them or give them as gifts. But I'm going to show you how I came to this, this sink. So here we go. I did one already dealing just with blues. Because if you keep it, keep your focus um, small, you get to learn a lot more. So how I started this was I mixed, and I'm going to show you, Blue, I did two blues. I did cerulean blue and phthalo blue and white and black. So you're gonna we're gonna get lights and medium and dark values. I also added some orange in order to have a little blue that's desaturated. And so this is how I started. Let me put this over here. And this is how I started. This was this is a piece of watercolor paper. And again, I like things that are pretty simple that you can practice. You can do this exercise over and over. Um, I just start with a regular pencil and watercolor paper and draw big lines off and on the page, just kind of squiggles. I want to make sure that I have some small shapes and some large shapes as well. And there's not a design element in it at all. It's just to have a variety of shapes. So something like this, we have big shapes and we have smaller shapes. So that's how you get started. Then I mix the colors. So this piece, this larger blue was just like this. And so then let's mix some colors because I want to show you um, how to do lights and darks. This is phthalo blue. This is cerulean. Okay. And if you just stick with simple, limited palettes, it makes your learning and just your practice so much easier. Here's white. Um, here is black. Okay. Let's see down here. And I'm going to put a little bit of the orange over on the side. Orange and blue are complementary colors. So if we add a little orange, we're going to get a blue that's a desaturated blue. So let's just say we're starting with a large shape. I go from large, then to medium, then to small. And if you just take these out ahead of time, you're already 10 steps ahead of the game. So I'm going to just mix this one. This would be straight blue, and you could put it on here. Here's a white added, so it's a lighter blue. 
And if you have, let me wipe this off, if you have just a little bit of the blue with the a little bit of the um, blue with the white, then you're going to get a value. Look, here are three different values already. Now let's work with this one. So we've got straight blue. We're going to do a blue with a medium value. Okay. And we're going to do a blue that's a lighter value. So we've got three, we've already got six different colors on here. So and I'm going to do this right here. Let's work on this piece. So I always like to work with the big um, brush. So I'm going to use, I'm going to make these a little bit lighter. And I'm just going to start with the really big shapes. And again, you just, I'm just going to do this a little bit and you work on yours and we can, you can see how you're going to fill it in. Um, and there's several stages. So doing the the several steps rather. And I like doing things in steps. It makes doing it again so much easier. You don't have to follow the lines that you drew exactly. You, they're guidelines. Everything is sort of like a guideline. So there we have one. Um, there's a darker color. Let's do medium. Let's do this one. This is a strong color. So I'm going to do a smaller one here. And we're just going to fill up the page over and over and over until it's all done. Now let's do this blue straight from the tube. I'm going to put it over here. Okay. And I've done this so many times with lots of different colors and it's just really wonderful. So we've got, um, let's, let's do the light blue. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Okay, looks like I'm mean, gonna might need a little bit lighter, so I'm just gonna do wet on wet here. And we're gonna keep going and keep going. So now I'm actually gonna go to a smaller brush. Um, and this time I think what I'm gonna do is add some black into this medium. I just want to show you how this is a little bit of when you add the black, it makes it a beautiful dark blue. And you want, ideally, you want a dark, a medium, and a light. At least three. At least three different values. Um, some people in the art business do five or ten values. That's really a lot. But to me, I just think in threes. That's kind of one of my mottos, thinking in threes. So I'll add, this is such a gorgeous color. So I'm going to add a little bit over here, too. And depending where you put it, if you put it right next to a light color, it's even going to make the light color look brighter. So now let's add a little bit of the dark to this one. We'll add a little bit more. So we have several different dark blues. And I'm going to put it over here. Okay. And I'm going to do another one and put it over here. You always want to make sure you have enough darks. There are a lot of people who don't put, um, a lot of artists who don't, um, are kind of afraid of dark colors. So you want to make sure you have a lot of dark colors. Now let's see what happens if we add a little bit of orange to this. Okay, let's add a little bit of orange. Add a little bit of white. Different values. There we go. This is a little on the darker side. But you get the whole idea. And that's what I really wanted to show you. Now, you don't need to watch me go and fill in all of this. I just wanted to show you the lights and darks of um, the, our values and the different size shapes. Now, so then you come out with a piece looking like this, which is really, really interesting. And what you can do, you can stop here. And if you, what I did is you can take a cutout um, shape and this is a five by seven, just cut out of a piece of poster board or watercolor paper, and you can move it around your painting and see if you really love one of the combinations of shapes. And if you do without doing anything else, then I'm saying go ahead and cut that out like this. It doesn't have to actually be up and down. Um, it can be on a diagonal. I'm going to put, um, put outline it like this. And then I'm going to cut it out and put it in one of those frames. 
Now, if you like this idea and you want to have endless idea, endless ideas for paintings, I have another video and check here. There's another video called endless ideas for paintings. But say you want to say, say you say, oh goodness, that's just, I want to have another layer. So this is what I would do. Thinking of variety, then think of line, which is what I did with my red ones. I will go in with a much smaller brush and I am going to do a very thin line. I'm going to do it. I have a lot of darks and I'm kind of, I'm very aware of doing, let me mix this down here, lights on darks and darks on lights. So I'm going to just say, I'm going to come in here just with, again, the same kind of like squiggle line. I'm thinking of um, coming out one edge, starting with one edge and coming around the other like that. I'm going to add, let's do another one. Let's say we're going to do a really dark one. Okay. And just to see a little bit of it, I'm going to do it over here. So this means I'm going to kind of do it on a light one of the lighter shapes. Look how already this is actually really helping this painting. And you can just keep going and keep going. Now, if you want to add one other variety, another thing I did was take this small brush here and do something, something like a pattern all over the whole thing. So I'm going to do a light white and I'm just going to have like dots all over it. It's just a light pattern, just like this. It kind of brings up the, the values just all over so that when I go around and cut it up like this, then I've got three or three, at least three different really interesting um, things to hold my attention. Now, I happen to have an art school, an online art school called Art with Adele Academy. And if you're interested in finding out more about it, click the link below. So thanks for joining and I'll see you in the next video.